Hey guys and welcome! Today I want to give you some quick tips to the currently available specialists in Battlefield 2042 and these are all things around their abilities that you might have not recognized yet but you should definitely know about. And I'm gonna start with tip number 1 to 5 and these are all about Sundance. Number 1. You can close Sundance's wingsuit mid-air to quickly turn around or adjust your altitude and direction. Just press Ctrl on PC or right stick on console to close it and open it again with space A or X. But what's actually interesting is that when the wingsuit is closed, you also have full access to all of your weapons and gadgets for a short moment. Pretty nice if you know how to use it and gives the saying of doing something on the fly a completely new meaning. Number 2. You can throw back the single explosives of the scatter grenade. If you can't grab the complete grenade while it's thrown at you, you still have the chance to push away the single scatters to receive less damage or none at all. In addition, the grenades that are thrown back will deal damage to enemies instead. Tip number 3. The anti-armor grenades do not only lock onto vehicles, but also to gadgets like Casper's drone or the insertion beacon. So if you see them around somewhere, just throw an anti-armor grenade into their direction and it will lock on automatically and destroy them. Number 4. Anti-armor grenades also have a short sleep timer. This means they can be thrown to the ground and stay there for the next 15 seconds. And when a vehicle is getting close within that time, the grenade will lock onto it automatically. And number 5. There is a plus menu for the grenade belt. When you have one of the grenades in your hands, just hold T on PC, LB on Xbox or L1 on PlayStation to bring it up. You can also use this to switch to grenade type as an alternative to scrolling through them by pressing the gadget button again, but it's not very useful since the grenade belt was reduced to only two different types, but it's still there. Next up is Dozer and tip number 6. His shield can deflect incoming bullets. It only works properly on close range and you need to point that tiny little dot of a crosshair precisely at the enemy for it to work, but it deals a little damage with each deflected bullet and makes it easier for you to get close enough for the melee kill. Number 7. To lower the chances of getting killed behind the shield, you need to crouch. Otherwise, the enemies can still see and shoot at your legs and feet. It reduces your movement speed even more, but can also raise your chances to survive. Then there's McKay with tip number 8. You can use the grappling hook on moving targets like vehicles and aircrafts and not only on buildings. It will also pull you towards them, so in combination with C5 this is a great mechanic for vehicle hunting. And tip number 9. You can also deal damage with the grappling hook. It's not much and it only deals damage to infantry, but it can create some funny clips if the enemy is on low health. Then, two tips for Zane, in case you haven't watched my guide for him. You can manually adjust the range of the XM370 Airburst Launcher simply by looking through the scope and then pressing V on PC or D-pad down on console. This comes in handy if you want to follow a moving target or want to adjust to another range without getting out of ADS, cause the automatic range finder only works every time you aim down sights. And the other tip is, you can adjust the intensity of visual and sound effects for Saints trait Perseverance. The trait fully regenerates your health after doing a kill, but it also comes with a visual and sound effect, and if this is disturbing for you or too intense, you can turn it down or completely turn it off, add options and then accessibility. Next up is Boris with tip number 12. When you are standing inside the circle around the sentry turret, it will increase its efficiency. This means the turret's reaction time is faster and the accuracy higher. You can simply test this when stepping in and out of the circle and just watch how fast the turret is turning. When sentry operator is shown in the bottom right of your HUD, then you are inside of the circle. And an additional tip to this, you can also control several turrets with one Boris. This is helpful when you play with friends and there is more than one Boris in your squad. Just place two turrets next to each other and have their circles overlapping a bit and when a Boris is standing between them, both of the turrets will work with more efficiency. And number 14, in case your turret receives damage, you can simply repair it with the repair tool. If you don't have one equipped, just quickly pick up the turret again before it gets destroyed and you can immediately place it again with full health. Then there's Irish with tips number 15 and 16. Similar to Sundance, Irish also has a plus menu with which you can select the gadget you need. But since it's only two gadgets for him as well, switching between them by pressing the ability button again is a lot easier. And the other tip, the shootdown sentinel does not only destroy throwables like all kinds of grenades, but every explosive. 
This includes LIS missiles, Saints airbursts, rockets from the Recall Less M5, but also explosives fired from tanks and helicopters. So if there is one of them being very annoying, just switch over to Irish and use his Sentinel. Then there's Liz with tip number 17 to 20. The rockets you can fire with her launcher also have a boost, so when you are close to a target and want to raise the chances of hitting them, press shift on PC or left stick on console to let them fly faster on the last meters. But in return, the rockets can also be detected by their red glow and if you are in a vehicle, also by an audio signal. And if you see this and you know you will be the target, you can try to shoot them and destroy them mid-air before they have the chance to hit. But then again, another tip for list players, don't underestimate the range of these rockets. If you shoot at a heli for example and you should miss your target first try, which happens quite a lot, try to turn it around and go for another try as long as there is fuel in your rocket. Or steer it to another target. Don't bail out of it and give up just because you missed your first target. And the last tip for her, the control sensitivity of the missiles is bound to the sensitivity of vehicles. Not sure who thought this would be a great idea, but in case the controls of the rockets feel too lazy, especially if you play with controller, try to adjust them by raising the vehicle aim sensitivity at options, then controller or mouse and keyboard, and vehicles. Next up is Casper and tip number 21. His movement sensor shows how far away enemies are. The closer the enemy is to you, the faster the sensors pulse and the more circles are visible. Number 22, you can destroy other drones with the EMP blast of your drone. Just log onto them and remove them from the map. And you can also equip the drone with ammo or med crates and heal your allies literally on the fly. It takes a bit of practice getting that crate up on the drone, but it's fun to fly around like this. The disadvantage is that you get seen much easier because the crate is so big. Then there's Rao with tip number 24. You can not only hack vehicles or all kinds of gadgets with his cyber warfare suit, but also open and close doors from distance or activate control panels of bridges and road blockers. Just point at them through the wall and hack them. What also comes in handy is the next tip, you can use his hacking ability through smoke. So even if a tank or an enemy is trying to hide in a cloud of smoke, you can still hack them and deactivate their weapon systems and HUDs. And when Rao is hacking infantry, they are not able to use any of their specialist abilities or gadgets for a short amount of time. They can't even switch to fire modes on their weapons. They can still fire them, but nothing else. You can see the disrupted enemy by the small icon above their heads. For Pike, there's only a little gameplay tip I have and that's use smoke grenades or the smoke grenade launcher when you play her. This way you will take your enemy's side while you are able to highlight them with your scanner. That works pretty well in objective areas or close combat, so be sure to try it out. And then there's Falk with tips number 28 to 31. And the first one is don't shoot out all of your syringes at only one teammate. One syringe is enough to fully heal them up and it won't heal faster if you shoot more of them, so keep some for others as well. Then the next one, Falk also has a self-healing animation. To use it, just hold 3 on PC or D-pad left on controller, but if it takes too much time, just shoot the syringe to the ground and walk over it. This will heal you automatically as well. And what you can also do, you can heal the robot dog ranger with this red pistol. So if you see one of them around and they belong to your team but are heavily damaged, shoot a syringe at them and it will heal them up. And as a last tip, if you want to try something else, if you shoot this red pistol at enemies, it will deal damage to them. It's not much, but can be pretty useful as a last resort in case you have this red pistol in your hands already, but I wouldn't recommend it as a primary weapon. Next up is Angel with tip number 32. Similar to Falk, there is an animation for self-resupply, so you don't have to throw the ammo to the ground and then pick it up again. You just have to hold the button for the ability and Angel will resupply himself. And then the next tip, call in Angel's loadout crates as often as you can as this is the best way for your teammates to resupply their gadget ammo like C5, grenades or rockets for the recall SM5. Cause the loadout crate resupplies the maximum amount of all ammunition and not only a little bit like the ammo crates. If you don't know how to call it in, just press the aim down sights button with the resupply bag in your hands, then mark a location for the drop and confirm it with the trigger button. And at the end, there's Crawford, and this is the last tip for today. Similar to Boris Sentrigon, the mounted Vulcan can be repaired with a repair tool. Simply picking it up shortly before it is destroyed and then placing it again immediately with full health is not working here. You need to repair it. 
And that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, be sure to drop a like or a comment below and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.